haven't been posting as much hybrid content as of late. I know I haven't been filming any prep series either. But if one thing holds true, I'll always be hybrid. Today, being a hybrid athlete, it looks a little different. It's actually pretty good. Now, while I may not have an extensive endurance prep scheduled for this year, or at least one that I'm documenting on YouTube, because I am running the Last Man Standing Backyard Ultra in Maine this September, I truly believe that hybrid athlete training is the most optimal and ideal way to train. And in this video, I wanna share three reasons that you should consider training like a hybrid athlete. But before we get into that, I think we should talk about what exactly is a hybrid athlete. In the past, the focus was on specialization. You'd pick a specific area of discipline and work to become your absolute best at it. And you are the top bodybuilder. Right, yeah. How long have you been the top bodybuilder? Well, I've not been beaten for the last seven years. As time has passed, people have increasingly desired to be a more well-rounded and versatile athlete, to have the strength of a weightlifter, the aesthetics of a bodybuilder, and the endurance of a runner. This desire led to the emergence of the hybrid athlete. A hybrid athlete is someone who combines multiple training disciplines to achieve a well-rounded fitness level. This can range in a wide array of sports such as cycling, running, lifting, rowing, or swimming. I don't know how he did it, But for me, it's primarily always been combining running and strength training. And this is where my journey as a hybrid athlete begins. It was 2018 and it was about a year after I transitioned out of the military. And what I didn't realize is when I was in the army, that training was hybrid training, running, bodyweight exercises, and strength training. And when I transitioned out of the military, I told myself that I would never run a day in my life again. So I went all in on strength training, bodybuilding, powerlifting. I wanted to get as big and strong as possible. And I never wanted to even think about running another mile in my life. And I got really strong. But after being out of the army for about a year, I started to miss running. I started to miss the, the physical and mental adaptations that running provided me, that this hybrid athlete lifestyle I was living was rewarding me with. So I signed up for my first marathon. It was the Austin Marathon in 2018, because I wanted a new challenge. I wanted to start running again. That's where I caught the bug of endurance sports. And combining that with strength training, I saw the benefits that it provided. And I now have learned that hybrid athlete training, this hybrid athlete lifestyle of combining two sports being strength training and running, that is the way that I wanna train for the rest of my life. And it's also the way that I recommend you should be training as well. Reason number one is improved body composition. So a lot of people will say that running will destroy your strength gains, your muscle mass. I actually had a really amazing conversation separately with Dr. Lane Norton and Thomas DeLauer on incorporating running with strength training and the impact on the human body from a body composition standpoint. I think that's one of the sort of myths that's out there on social media right now. It's like there's this attack on cardio. A more recent meta-analysis came out that showed aerobic conditioning did not appear to attenuate hypertrophy or strength. They were actually able to show that doing some form of cardio may actually be beneficial for hypertrophy. It's an adaptation. Our bodies are accustomed to us going out for a run. Our bodies say, oh, this is what Nick does. So if you take someone that's never run before, there might be a gray area period of time while they kind of find themselves and maybe have a little bit of catabolism. In the long run, they're gonna build more muscle probably. One of the limitations for building muscle is actually capillarization, so building more capillaries. When you do cardio, when you run, you also have more capillary density. That's nutrient delivery. So you could potentially become stronger. With more strength comes more mass and better hypertrophy, all this. The research pretty clearly shows that like, you know, moderate cardio, 30 to 45 minutes, four, five, six times a week, it's probably not gonna negatively impact 
your lean body mass accrual. As long as protein needs are met, you will typically be just fine. So if you're running and you're lifting, you probably need to increase your protein more than if you were just running or just lifting. If you're somebody who's looking to like, maximize the amount of muscle you can build, just don't go too crazy with the cardio. And, you know, I think you'll be you'd be just fine. So we have to look at exercise, combining strength training and running, not necessarily just on the exercise itself, but the application. Reason number two is improved health span and lifespan. What is the difference between health span and lifespan? Lifespan is the amount of years that you live. So think of it in terms of time or duration. Health span is that quality of life prior to disease. We know that strength training is going to improve and increase bone mineral content. And the older you get and the stronger your bones are, you reduce your risk of having a massive injury. Also, VO2 max. VO2 max is going to decrease the older you get. But if we build a strong VO2 max when we are younger and maintain that, the older we get through zone two training, but also incorporating some high intensity zone five endurance training every once in a while is super important. So improving, increasing, and maintaining a strong VO2 max and bone mineral content is going to be extremely significant and important the older you get for your lifespan and your health span. I'm curious as to whether or not you have any favorite one or two studies that point to a sort of naturally occurring example of how people can become very fit in one area and not another. Um, one of them we actually did in Stockholm, Sweden, and we worked with a whole bunch of cross-country skiers that were in their 80s and 90s, living alone and healthy, and we compared them to a group of individuals uh, here in America who are the same age, but we're not exercising. So we ran them through a whole bunch of VO2 max tests. If you are in like VO2 max of 20 or 21 or 22, you're not below that line of independence, but you're on that threshold. And so what we found was our folks here in America, the group average was right around that number. So if they got a cold or they had anything pop up where they lost a little bit of fitness, they were gonna drop below that line and would probably have to go to some sort of assisted living situation. The cross country skiers, the group average was most closer to like 35 to 38. Now that number is about the VO2 max you would find for a normal college male. What I didn't tell you about is their leg strength and functionality. And that part was no more superior than it was their counterparts who were not exercisers. So what that showed really, really clearly, you will see in general their VO2 max, their resting heart rate, their blood pressure. It will be uh, markedly healthier. However, it is not sufficient for overall global health because it does almost nothing for leg strength. For any other marker of health are the things that are actually going to predict mortality, uh, morbidity the most. You need a combination of some sort of broad strength training and broad endurance. Now, I'll be honest, when I was younger, when I was in my late teens, 20s, I was never thinking about training and nutrition in terms of extending the life that I was gonna live. It is something to keep in mind and knowing that it reinforces that these decisions we're making is going to have a massive positive impact on our life and health span in the future. And the third reason is that training flexibility promotes sustainability. The best plan is one that you can stick to. And I know me personally, if I'm doing the same exact workout over and over again, day after day, yes, I will do it, but I start to lose the joy and passion and fulfillment from the journey itself. And that's why hybrid athlete training has been so attractive and fun for me because I go through seasons and chapters where sometimes the area of focus for me is a marathon prep or a triathlon prep or an ultra prep. I will increase the volume and intensity of endurance training, but still have a foundation of strength training as part of that hybrid athlete lifestyle. There's also seasons and chapters like this last bodybuilding prep that I just did where I increase the volume intensity, duration of strength training because that was my area of focus. And I reduced the amount of running or cardiovascular training that I was doing in that specific season or chapter. It doesn't matter where my focus is for that period of time, there is still a foundation of the other. So like I said, the best plan is one that you can stick to and having the ability to be flexible promotes sustainability. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe like it and comment below what hybrid athlete training has done for you if you've incorporated that style of training into your lifestyle. And as always, go on more.